When it comes to modelling, if you're anything like me, I really get into the zone and don't really think about much else, especially what my objects are getting named, which is all well and good for your personal projects, but even then, it's good to have some sort of structure and method when it comes to keeping your projects organised and clean. This becomes super important when working within a pipeline, where your assets need to work as they move on down the different stages, whether that's for user readability, or maybe predetermined rules get applied based on the naming conventions assigned. For example, maybe the renderer uses rules to assign shaders. So if you hadn't guessed it already, this video is going to be about naming conventions, specifically to work well within a visual effects pipeline. So if you're thinking about getting into the industry or just want to keep your projects more organized, then this is a video for you. So let's quickly break down a few things. Names can be broken down into four categories, which appear in the following order, location, so where the object is within the model, name, what the object is, material, used to specify the material properties, and then finally type, used to describe the object. When working on models with a distinct left or right side, such as a character, creature, or vehicle, it's necessary to use some kind of location tag. Location tags can be used to specify a location which is local to the asset, like for example, L for left or R for the right side of a car. Name tags are pretty self-explanatory and can be used to describe what an object is, for example, door or window. And then there's the material tag, which can be used to instruct which shaders to apply. It's also important information to pass to the texturing artist so they can know what material they're painting maps for and effects will use it to instruct how the geometry should be simulated. And then finally, the type tag helps specify what the object is. Uh, is it going to be rendered or not? Is it a locator or a group? Or is it geo? Okay, so I think that pretty much wraps up the basics. So let's hop into an example. Okay, so you can see here, things don't look too bad, but let's just open up one of these groups. Okay, gross. So you can see here that I've really not followed any sort of structure and some things aren't even named. So it'll be confusing for anyone picking this up further down the line. And it's even confusing to me right now. So as an example for this tutorial, Let's rename the wheels. Just uh, starting with this front wheel here. The location is front left, so let's put L underscore F. We can call this tire, and we can add the numbers to make things clearer, like 001. The material tag that we're going to add is rubber, so underscore rubber and the type is going to be underscore geo. Okay, so you can probably see how we're going to be doing this. So let's just move on to the alloy. We can rename this LF alloy 001 uh, painted steel underscore geo. It's pretty self-explanatory. Awesome, so for this wheel 001, uh, that's everything for the geo. So let's just quickly rename the groups. So this group would be L underscore F wheel 001. It doesn't need a material tag, but we can add the type, which is a uh, group, so GRP. And we can also just rename the top wheel category to wheels underscore group, so GRP. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to fast forward through the rest because you should have an idea of what you're doing and it's going to get pretty boring. Okay, so you can see how much more readable this is, even for yourself. I hope this kind of makes sense and it's a good practice to get into and something you would definitely need to consider when working within a pipeline environment. If you've got any other suggestions for tutorials, just leave a comment, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.